Welcome back to the channel. My name is Thomas Fletcher and I'm the host of the LCSW Network and the Military Social Work Network. If you are new to both of my channels, please do me a favor by smashing that like button, by subscribing to the channels, and by sharing this video with your social work colleagues and friends. The purpose of both of these channels is to create a community of hope and support where social workers can come for relevant news, information, and inspiration. Well, welcome back to Ask a Military Social Worker. So we got a question from a viewer named Lassie1057. And this viewer asks, which exam should I take to join as a military social worker? And do I need to take physical and medical test? Well, Lassie1057, thank you for this. Thank you for these questions. And um, I will do my best to answer them. So uh, if you are a new viewer, I am a military social worker on two sides of the coin. I have been a social worker in the Department of Veterans Affairs for almost 20 years. And I have been a uniformed military social worker in the reserve components of the US Army uh, as of 12 years that I'm filming, filming today. Um, I joined the Army National Guard December 2nd, 2011. And I joined uh, the Department of Veterans Affairs as a civilian social worker in March of 2004. So, um, so I'll, answer, I'll answer the first question. What exam should I take to join as a military social worker? Okay, so if we are talking about civilian, social, civilian military social work, you, there are several exams that you need to take. Um, to join at the lowest level of the civilian social work in the Department of Veterans Affairs, that's a GS-9. So to join as a GS-9, you need to be a graduate of a MSW program, Masters of Social Work, and um, that's the entry level. So at that point, you don't, need, you don't need to take an exam other than you've graduated, you've taken all your exams in, in graduate school, and now you have an MSW from a CSWE accredited school of social work, okay? So that's, that's GS level nine. To uh, advance from a GS nine to GS 11, you will need to take um, an exam to get your LMSW, right? That's, that's a licensed master's social work, and that's independent level of practice. Um, so you, if you're, if, assuming that you're in America, USA, you will have to take the MSW level of the ASWB license exam, okay? So that's for GS 11. For GS-12, you will need an advanced practice license. I'm in California, so, and California actually only has one level of licensure for social workers, and that's the LCSW. So for that level, you need to take the ASWB um, advanced practice level, okay, which is the LCSW. Uh, and in most states, the advanced practice level is an LCSW, but uh, many states will call it um, something else in some cases, okay? So those are the exams that you need to take to become a military social worker in the Department of Veterans Affairs. Now, if we're talking about uniform services, you will need an advanced practice um, license to uh, practice as a as a licensed um, clinical social worker in, in the Department of Defense, again, as a uniformed social worker, okay? DOD all, does have civilian positions that are similar to um, uh, getting a civilian social work position in the Department of Veterans Affairs. But um, I believe that, um, well, I know, so let's start with what I know, because again, I am 
a social worker in both the Department of Veterans Affairs and in the Department of Defense. So to become a, a social worker in the Department of Defense, you need an advanced practice social work degree as a reserve component, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll speak on that because that's what I am. I am a reserve component licensed clinical social worker in, currently I'm serving in the U.S. Army Reserves, okay? Um, an active duty, if you, if you want to be a uniform social worker um, on the active duty side, you're also going to need to have an advanced practice social work license. Okay, uh, and I learned when I when I did first try to commission um, in, in the reserves. At the time, I had an LMSW, and that did not suffice for me to join as a licensed um, social worker. Again, on the reserve component of the U.S. Army, I needed the advanced practice license, which I ultimately um, got. Once I got that um, advanced practice social work license, then I was eligible to commission into the Army National Guard, okay? Um, so that's the first part of, of Lassie 1057's question. The second part of the question is, do I need to take physical and medical tests? Um, so if we're talking, again, if we're talking um, about joining the uniform to become a uniform military social worker, um, there's no phys there's no let's say there's no physical test that you need to take um, entering you once you once you join you will need to take uh, currently we have the army combat fitness test a what is it army yeah army combat fitness test ACFT right it used to be APFT you know the military loves acronyms just like the VA <laughs> Um, so upon joining, you do have to you do have to take physical fitness tests on a biannual basis. But when you first join, you don't have to and you don't have to take a physical test. Um, that's again, this is I'm speaking on the reserve component side. Um, since I since I did not join um, the active duty side, I can't speak to that. Um, but I, again, I can speak to the reserve component side. Um, I did not have to take the Army physical fitness tests to enter. I did have to take it once, once, I, once I was in and once I, you know, after I had commissioned, I did have to take, you know, APFT at the time. Um, I did have to take a medical test before I was found eligible. So medical tests um, uh, is the, one, of the, one of the requirements on the reserve component side and on the active duty side. You do have to you do have to get a physical a medical exam, okay. So the medical is a requirement for joining um, the military, whether you're on the reserve component side or the active duty side, okay. So I hope that clarified things. So again, just to just to summarize um, the questions that Lassie 1057 asked, what exams do I need to take to join as a military social worker? Um, again, on the, if we're talking on the civilian side, for the Department of Veterans Affairs, um, at the very minimum, you need to take the exam for LMSW. Um, that's a, again, that's a GS-11 position. When you first, again, as a new MSW graduate coming into the VA, you don't need to have any exam to join. You're going to come in as a GS-9. Um, but to progress from GS-9 to GS-11, you will need to take the LMSW exam to get that GS-11. And to get the GS-12, you will need to take the advanced practice of the ASWB to get your LCSW, okay? And again, on the reserve component side, um, to be eligible to come in um, as a social worker, you need to have an advanced practice or LCSW. Um, as one of the prerequisites to become uh, um, a uniform military social worker. Okay, and then the second part of the question was, do I need to take physical tests and, and medical tests to become a military social worker? Uh, again, on the uniform military social work side, you will need to take the medical exam. Uh, it's usually through MEPS. Um, or contractors that contract with MEPS. MEPS is a medical entry 
um, physical. I believe that's that's you know I should know what the acronym is, but it is MEPS. That's that is the organization in the military that does all physicals for for in pro, for service members that are in processing into the military. Okay. Um, so again, thank you for your questions, um, and please keep sending me your questions. I love receiving them. All right, so I'm gonna stop right here, but I wanna thank you all for watching this video. For all the social workers and other licensed mental health professionals, thank you for the work that you do every day, for your clients, for your agencies, and for the profession. Please continue to support each other and yourselves. Bye for now.